Hi guys, today I want to discuss one of my more well-known boas, a beautiful Suriname red-tailed male named Prometheus. I'm also going to discuss the bloodline he established and my plans for continuing this bloodline so that other boa enthusiasts can enjoy it. If you're new to the channel, this is the place for information about all aspects of keeping and breeding boa constrictors in captivity. So if you want to learn all about these beautiful animals and follow my breeding trials, be sure to subscribe. I've been sharing pictures of my boas via Facebook for about the last six years or so. And the animal that's gotten the most enthusiasm by far is definitely this male Prometheus. I really don't know a whole lot about Prometheus. I got him from an ad that was placed on one of the online reptile classifieds. And I asked the usual questions. The, first, the seller couldn't really give me all that much information about him and I couldn't even really figure out if he was wild caught or captive bred. I thought the seller had indicated that he was captive bred, but based on his appearance when he arrived, I would speculate that he's wild caught. And so, um, I knew the animal, I knew he was a special animal just based on the photos in the ad, but the photos weren't really all that great, so I didn't really know, you know, exactly what he'd look like. And I was, you know, pretty blown away by what he really looked like when he arrived. So Prometheus had a really, really long red tail, very, very high contrast with kind of this grayish silvery body color and these saddles that were just really contrasty and just this really dirty wild look. I mean, he just really looked like a beautiful boa that you might see in the rainforest somewhere. Not these really clean boas that people have bred them and looked all washed out and clean, which I don't, doesn't really appeal to me. You know, he just had this really beautiful wild look. So if you've been watching my videos, you probably noticed I haven't featured Prometheus in any videos. Unfortunately, he passed away a couple years ago. Um, I'm not exactly sure what happened. He wasn't really showing any symptoms and I just found him, you know, dead uh, one day. I'm pretty sure he was a pretty old boa. So I think it might just have been his time. You know, when he arrived, um, he had several scars on the side of his body, a couple scars on his head, you know, which is why I speculate that maybe he was a wild caught animal. He also just kind of generally looked older. I mean, as snakes age, just like as humans age, they start to look a little bit haggard and a little bit beat up. And he kind of had that look, you know, even though he was a spectacular animal. Uh, he also, he had a muscle, his muscle tone wasn't really all that strong. So boas, as they age, they'll sometimes lose muscle tone. They can't really hold on nearly as much as they could when they were younger. And based on his lack of muscle tone, I would, you know, speculate that he was a pretty old animal. He was also about seven feet when I got him and he didn't grow during the time that I had him, which is another reason why I speculate that he was probably an older animal. So I started to breed, I, to attempt to breed him shortly after I got him. And after a couple years that I wasn't successful, I finally had a litter with him in 2016. And it was a litter of nine babies, including this one. There were actually, of the nine, I actually kept six of them, three males and three females. So this is one of the males. You know, three of them went to new homes and I am still, I, I hear from their owners pretty often. So I kept, you know, kind of been following these animals. Um, so I got the, the six animals. I ended up breeding them again the following year in 2017. And this time I got a smaller litter. Um, I ended up keeping two of the animals, two females from that litter. You know, he wasn't really a good breeder. That's, you know, another reason why I think he was probably on the older side. In fact, when I bred him in 2017, I saw almost basically no breeding activity. I just put him in with the female and this was a different female than I had paired him with the, the previous year. I didn't see any breeding activity, but then fortunately the female was gravid. And she ended up giving birth to, I believe it was five babies. Um, there were about five or six slugs as well. So I, you know, I think he was just not a very great breeder. And then in 2018, unfortunately, that's when he passed away. As you might imagine, I was really devastated by the loss of this animal. And it's something that I really haven't discussed with anybody up to this point. But I'm happy that he did leave his genes, you know, and he uh, gave me two nice litters that I kept animals from in order to continue his legacy. 
And so, as I mentioned, the first litter was a litter of nine where I kept six. This is one of the males, one of the nicer looking males. You can see just how long and red his tail is and how symmetrical the tail saddles are. And then he really shows the dirty look um, that his father had. Just a lot of speckles and freckles and background markings. Look how dirty and speckled his belly is. I just love that look. Uh, this guy actually has more symmetrical saddles than his father, Prometheus. The mother of this litter was a Florida Red Tails line, uh, and she had kind of more symmetrical peak saddles. Prometheus had peak saddles, but they weren't quite as symmetrical. So this male is really nice. He's you know definitely a favorite of mine. I think the, the my favorite from that litter I have paired up right now. So I don't have him for this video, but I've shown that animal in quite a few of my previous videos. He's a beautiful Prometheus line male. He's actually paired up with one of my 2014 holdbacks females right now from a you know unrelated bloodline. And it looks like I have seen activity. So I'm really hopeful that we'll have some more of the Prometheus bloodline Suriname boas, uh, you know, this summer or fall. This is another animal from the 2016 litter. This is a female. So this female, along with the male that I have paired up, are my two favorites from that litter. And this female just really stood out just by how clean and symmetrical her saddles are, as well as she's got these connected saddles. Uh, her background isn't quite as dirty looking as some of the others or, you know, her father. But she has this really long red tail just like her father. So beautiful Prometheus bloodline female, Suriname boa. So of course this, the females take a little bit longer to breed. So I wouldn't expect that this animal would be ready to breed until, you know, what, 2022 or 2023 probably. Um, just has to, you know, put on a few more years of growth before she's ready to breed. And here's one more holdback animal from the 2016 litter that I had. This is a female, another female. So this one you can see she looks quite a bit different from the female I just showed you. She's quite a bit bigger. So sometimes animals from the same litter, even given the same feeding schedule, they just go at different rates. And you know that's normal and it's to be expected. Her look is also a little bit different. Uh, she kind of favors a little bit more the mother, the Florida Red Tails animal, but she definitely has the beautiful high contrast and you can see the really long red tail uh, that Prometheus had. So just a gorgeous animal. And then what I like about this animal, she's a little more mellow and docile. Like when I take her out, she doesn't hold on quite as uh, tight and she's a little bit more, you know, enjoyable to handle than some of my other boas so personality wise I really like this animal as well but you know she's just kind of a top-notch classic Suriname red tail boa uh, you know just has everything you would want in a Suriname red tail now I want to show you some holdbacks from the 2017 litter that Prometheus sired and this was a smaller litter unfortunately there were no males you know, I was hoping I'd get, you know, males and females I could hold back, but since there were just a few females, I was only able to hold back some of these females. Incidentally, I've seen that a lot. Sometimes when you have a litter that has a lot of slugs or, you know, some, you know, poor fertility that you will have mostly females rather than males. And other boa breeders have described this phenomenon as well. It may be that the males have a higher mortality rate in utero, so with a small litter you're more likely to have females. So this is uh, one of the females that I have, and this was from a different uh, female who mothered this litter. So these are actually half siblings to the 2016 litter. And my plan is to breed the half siblings to each other because they you know, won't be as much inbreeding as breeding full siblings. And then the resulting offspring would be 50% Prometheus bloodline. So basically the same thing genetically as the offspring of Prometheus. And since I've selected the, you know, my favorites which resemble Prometheus, hopefully they'll really continue that look. Uh, that you know he was famous for. So you can see this female has this beautiful tannish pink color. She's got a lot of pinks. Um, you know the shape of her saddles is quite a bit different than the, the half siblings I just showed you. But you can see that long beautiful red tail. Uh, this animal also has un unusual head markings. She's got kind of this almost like a cross between her eyes. And you see this a lot Interestingly, in Central American boas, you don't see it as much in true red tails. 
I neither of the parents had this marking. You know, so the shape of her head is, you know, very much a BCC, a, a true red tail. She just has this kind of cross marking. But overall, you know, really gorgeous animal. A little bit of striping you can see in the in the front of her body. Um, but another beautiful animal. This female, I expect at the earliest she'd be ready to breed would be 2023. So it's going to be a few years before we have these 50% Prometheus bloodline offspring available. You know, but fingers crossed they'll be available in the not too distant future. And one more holdback female from the 2017 Prometheus litter. And so this female looks a little bit different. You know, you can see she got this beautiful pink sides. Um, I, she has a really interesting shape to her saddles. They're kind of different from other boas I've seen. And then interestingly, a lot of her saddles have this little circle of the background uh, coloration, the tan background coloration in the middle of the dark saddle. And this is a trait that I've seen a lot in boas from Venezuela, both the true red tails from Venezuela as well as the uh, Paraguanera Peninsula boas. But this is the first that I've seen it in the Suriname. So it's interesting how these little you know, differences in traits can pop up in the litter. And you know, you might select for something you just think is cool. And then if you do this for a few generations, you get an animal that's gonna be completely different. So you know, part of the enjoyment about selective breeding, but also part of the issue with maintaining a pure locality. If you're breeding for these you know, different looks, is that really a pure locality if it's no longer representative of the wild uh, phenotypes, you know, something to ponder. But anyway, this is a beautiful animal. You can see, I'll, let me show your tail, but she's got the long, beautiful red tail. Um, she's also maybe a little bit smaller than her sister I just showed you. So at the earliest, I would say she'd be ready in 2023, maybe not even until 2024 to breed. But, you know, they grow slowly. You just got to be patient with these guys. And, you know, I really want this project to be successful. So I don't really, I'm not going to push anything and, you know, be very conservative with breeding these animals. So that was a little bit about the Prometheus bloodline. You know, I wish I could show you Prometheus, but unfortunately at this point I can't. You know, you can see pictures of him. Um, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to shoot me a line. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.